All right, quick review of the defrost cycle. We're in the defrost cycle. Clock motor's humming along. Defrost solenoid has 115 volts, but no neutral. EVAP fan has no power, it is off. Solenoid valve has no power, it is closed. Defrost heaters are on, and we are melting the ice off of the coil. As we're melting the ice off of the coil, the temperature of that coil begins to rise. and our defrost termination fan delay is sensing that temperature rise and is slowly moving this contact up as the as the um, temperature increases. So at the at 55 degrees in this demonstration, it's usually about 55 degrees. The ter defrost termination and fan delay can have some different temperatures, but um, and we're going to take a look at it as if it were set for 55 degrees. So when we hit 55 degrees and it's sensed by the defrost termination and fan delay, watch right here, the, at that point of 55 degrees, that contact is closed. So it goes from moving its way up to closing. This is the moment of defrost termination. So let's take a look at what's happening here. So our 115 volts is pass through this closed contact up to the solenoid valve so I'm sorry the solenoid the defrost solenoid the defrost solenoid now has a neutral because we have closed this contact in the uh, defrost termination fan delay and we now have power to the defrost solenoid and it um, activates this defrost solenoid the 115 volts, at, at the, and this is the, at the at the moment of defrost termination. For a moment, is not connected to uh, the evap fan, so the evap fan is off, and we still have our um, 115 volts to the defrost heaters, and our solenoid valve is closed. So what we have done here is we have frozen a millisecond of time at the moment of defrost termination. So at the microsecond that this contact makes, this is where we stand. But the next microsecond, once this defrost solenoid valve now has power, it shoots its plunger out and down to hit to hit this um, slider. So we'll take a look at that in the next video.